In this video, I'm going to show you three strategies of dealing with query parameters in URLs. Mm, I love URLs and I ugh, hate query parameters because sometimes there's a question mark, sometimes there's an ampersand. Uh, and they're a pain to deal with. You're watching Dev Tips with me, David, and MPJ is gone on vac uh, he's gone on uh, trips to Russia. We'll see if we see him again. We don't know. Today's video is sponsored by Coursera. Thank you, Coursera. Coursera partners with top universities and industry leaders such as UPenn, University College London, Google, and IBM to provide the world's best online education experience. You can go either for a single course or an entire master's degree. It is 100% online and very affordable. Go check them out at Coursera.org. That link is in the episode description. Thank you, Coursera. Now let's get back to the show. Matthias is out traveling, so it will be just you and me and query parameters. So what are query parameters? They are basically the thing that comes after the path in the URL. So we have uh, a URL, const URL. And let's just use, uh, let's just use my old employer and go for Hans Rosling's book here, Factfulness. Uh, yep, there we go. Here we have a URL. So the URLs look like this, and we can just make this a bit uh, nicer too. Yeah. Like that. And I'm gonna use Quoka to just see what we're doing here as an example. So we do Command Shift P, Quoka, start on current file. I haven't even saved this file. That's why I like Quoka, you can just run it on everything. So now we can just type URL and see what it looks like. Here we got the URL. We have query parameters and they are used in this way. So on this site that I used, I came from this campaign site, like this campaign page and then they append. If I come from a campaign, they like append a query parameter like that. So that's often what query parameters are used for, like tracking. So like, you know, the uh, this could be GCLID, which is uh, what uh, Google Ads, their AdWords are using, or the, uh, is it DCID or DCLID? I don't remember. Double click ID for their display network. Let's just call it GC, GCLID. So that is not a problem if we only have this, but often we have multiple parameters. So perhaps, uh, we have some kind of other parameter. It's like we have a filter here, filter uh, hard cover. Perhaps it's only a filter of hard, the hard cover version of this book. Uh, and then this becomes a, an ampersand for the next parameter. And perhaps some other parameter has been added. Okay, so we have the URL here. It has a filter hard cover. It has a GCLID and then something. And then for some reason, I want to redirect this or I want to just track this without this, this GCLID that is only used by the Google Ads script. I don't, I don't want that. So I just want to remove that. How can we do that? I'm gonna show you my top three strategies for doing this. And why am I doing that? Because it just happens over and over again that I have to just filter out stuff either when I'm doing analysis and just have to rewrite URLs or if I'm handling a client's WordPress account, then I would like to redirect from one page to another page, but without this, uh, some parameter. So I'm going to show you three ways of doing this. The hacky way, that's what we're going to start with, and then uh, a regex way, and then the JavaScript way, the best way. And then a special uh, small mini strategy. Okay, let's do it. So let's call this the hacky way, hacky.js. So we could just take, uh, let's make a new, uh, URL without GCLID. What would we do? What could we do here? We can, of course, just take the URL, split it with some separator, and we can just split it here from the ampersand. Actually, we can just split it into two parts first and last. Have to restart Quoka on this new file. There we go.
So the split gives us uh, an array of the first and the last part where we split it because we know it's only with two parts. And then we can just use the first part. So const URL without GCLID equals to just the first part. So that's a quick and dirty way. That's the hacky way, but it's really, really bad because now we didn't get the, the other parameters. Perhaps we don't need them, but if we want them, we need to do it in a different way. Okay. Regular expressions for doing this. I won't write the reg regular expression because it's just too much pain. Just imagine this. Let's just zoom in here. First, we make a regex that says, take everything starting from the question mark. And then there's something and equals and something. And this other something can be whatever. But sometimes the string looks like this. It has question mark, param one equals value one. And that's it. Sometimes it has like the other example here. It has multiple params. Sometimes it has no params and the regex have to work with everything. So we will use the wisdom of the internet and Stack Overflow that has already figured this out. So here someone had the idea and uh, it's really difficult because you can just see he made all these tests. Different params. He just wanted to look at the param part. You can see just how many different alternatives. He wants to filter out foo because the it can be just the name of the parameter without any value or it can be the name the parameter name with an equal sign but empty value or it can be yeah you get it it can be everything like this and then he wrote the expected results what to get back if he filtered out that param and then if we inputted foo without nothing it should output nothing so it passes all his different tests and this is just to show the complexity of writing this yourself. And let's look at the actual regex. The final regular expression looks like this. So what does it do? Let's just move this into code. So we had foo here and we're gonna use gclid instead. So here's the way the regular expression starts and it has an either so either it starts with the ampersand and gclid and then a bunch of stuff that follows or it starts from the beginning of the string with gclid without the question mark so he just stripped out the question marks basically he did what we did like const he took the first part and the last part and if we split on question mark, we will get both, both. So last looks like this. Oh, we have to run Quokka again, start on current file. So here we get the last part without the question mark because we split at the question mark. We use that as a, the divider. So currently first and last is everything from the URL except for the question mark. So let's write const params without gclid. We take the last part and use a replace. So we're gonna take this entire regular expression and everything that this matches, we're gonna replace with nothing. Replace with nothing. Params without gclid. What does that look like? Hmm, seems to be working. It took everything here, GCLID, including the ampersand before, and then all the value before the next one. So let's just see that this works. We can just remove this and move this to the end because that's like an edge case that always makes stuff not work. It works. And if we just remove moved it to the beginning, uh, and then we have to have a question mark there, add the plus there to merge these. And ampersand there. Yes, it still works. Great. And then we can just concatenate them back, back together. So we take write const URL without gclid equals 
template literal. We take the first part first. And remember that, that when we did the split, we got away with the question mark. So we have to re-add that and then add the new part that is the parents without GCL ID. So we just add that there. URL without GC, without GCL ID. How does that look? So we have the entire URL here, question mark, the filter hardcover and something, but we do not have the GCL ID. So the filter works, like the regex works. <sighs> I would try, I would say, do not try to write this regular expression by yourself because it will cause you pain, very, very much pain. But if you know that you don't really have that many question marks or like parameters, just go with this hacky one because it's so fast. You just split it and take the first part. How can we do this in the like perfect way? We could do the thing where, the, where we split, like we did in the previous examples, but we can also just do const a, we say that we create an a element, and use window.document.create element, and just create an a. And to a, we add an href, which is the earl. And now, when we have the earl, we can just use all these handy features that come with the anchor element. So we can do let params be a dot search. So now we got everything, including the question mark. If this doesn't work with, for you with Quokka, you can just, it will pop up and ask you to install a Quokka extension that will simulate the window and document because it's actually running node, but the window is only available in the browser. Window.document.create element A. And we get an A tag here, you see. That's how Firefox write, writes it. So we have the params using this technique instead, instead of splitting it. And we can use this new part called URL search params. Instead of taking the search straight, we create new URL search params and we input the params, the search part of the string into this URL search params. So from the params, we can, so we can get and use handy features like get the filter and see what that looks like. The filter param has the hardcover value and we can get the GCL ID and get its value. So we get the, but we can also manipulate them. So we can do params.delete GCL ID. And then we'll see what has the GCL ID value become nil. It doesn't exist anymore. So now we have a new set of params. We modify them by deleting the GCL ID. So now we can just put them back in. So let's create a new one first. Uh, let's just split. Now we do <laughs> now we do the split again. I guess this was not meant to be. And we take the first part of that to get first. So this is the first part without the question mark and without the params. And we can create const URL without GCL ID is a template literal. So we take the first part and then we make an ampersand and then we add, what should we add here? Well, let's create const new params. The params are params.toString. So the new params, what? This should work. Parents to string. It doesn't work because we haven't done this yet. Okay, let's comment that out. Okay, now we get the new params and the GCL ID is gone. And if we were to move it, so we move this far back, we can just uh, cut this out and make something else here. Hey, Monica. And then we add 
them here instead with the ampersand and we see that it's filtered out again it works it just works so this url search params they work and then we just put everything back together but you see we don't have the question mark here again so we'll just do the const url without gclid we do the first add the question mark and the new params to get let's fill this out and then get the url without gclid and here we got it filtered out so that was the three strategies for dealing with this but there's also like a fourth ish strategy that many tools have this built in already so for me it's about filtering out uh, analytics data perhaps i can already start filtering it while collecting it so that's a trick to just filter it out within ga or from whatever tool so if you go to admin and the settings and then often somewhere there is like an exclude url query parameters and you would just put gclid and perhaps the filter and perhaps the sum parameter if you want to do that many many things and also some plugins to wordpress have these sort of things that you can just exclude things and then you don't have to bother to think about it anymore you should go check out coursera.org if you want to learn stuff and uh, be better follow the link in the episode description to show them that you came from here matthias is in russia this week and next week he will be somewhere else the us so unless he get abducted uh, we'll be back in a few weeks and until then it's just me so write in comments if you want me to del dive into something else uh, next episode and uh, most episodes come out on friday mornings at 0800 gmt uh, that is something in your time zone for me it's nine o'clock in the morning i don't know what that means for you uh, thank you for watching write in comments what you want to see more about and see you in the next video ciao